heard that thunder and I thought he must be hitting those golf balls hard. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's hitting something up there. Those golf balls are making that sound today. Now to you and Pam and Janice and David on behalf of Antonio Bagarin, the pastor, and Brother Andrew, myself, and all of our staff here, and everybody here today, we offer you our, our promise of our continued prayers. Because when your second parent's gone, there's a, there's a loss. You know, when your parents are always there, no matter even how old they are in their health situation, they're still there. And when they're gone, you move to the front row. The wisdom of the family is gone, that being them, and you move to the front. You move to the front row. You're the generation now that that, that, that gift has been handed on to. And a 93-year long journey, what a gifted life. 93 years of life. And I was thinking this morning, think of how being born in Detroit, living in this area all his life, think of how he saw Detroit change. Think of uh, the Detroit he knew growing, growing up. Was he born to East and this side or what? East side all his life. Wouldn't need a passport to go across the river. <laughs> That's another world. But all his life on this side of town, and what he would have seen and what he would have known his lifetime and the experiences that he had and the blessings that God gave to him, the gifts of his life that he used to provide for you, the gifts of being a grandpa, seven times over his grandpa and four times his great grandfather, to watch his family grow, the way he lived his faith, the way he lived his faith, celebrating his faith at St. Isaac's and being an usher, being a part of the men's club there, but also the way he lived life from Sunday to Sunday. How he not just received the body of Christ at an altar like this, but how he was that presence of Christ in the world, to be willing to help others, to reach out to others, to help others. The great sayings he had as a grandpa, the way he could be there for others to help out. I was thinking this morning, I wonder, 93 years of life, how many rounds of golf he played? <laughs> how many rounds of golf he enjoyed in life? And being outside, the beauty of life. And just as, I don't think we're supposed to have a storm today, you know, sometimes it's golf, there's stormy days, sometimes there's good days. He would have known that, he would have known that was like life itself, too. And today, as we celebrate his life, we begin with the signs of baptism. Now, on the day of baptism, God claimed him as his own. And God said, Daniel, I'm going to walk with you through this life. And I'll be with you when there's times to celebrate. And when there's times of challenge, I'll be with you even closer. And at the end of your journey, the end of your journey, you will come home. Home to eternal life. And that's he's been blessed with now. That's what we celebrate today in this Mass of Resurrection. He is where he was born to be, at his time of home. And along our journeys in life, we have a lot of different addresses. We have a lot of different addresses. The one that he was born in. The one where he grew up. The different address he lived later in life. But he's at his final address now. Home in heaven with God. Home with God. And today as we celebrate his life, we have this candle that he would have received the light off of when he was baptized. His parents would have held the candle and the words would have been said, Daniel, receive the light of Christ. And carry that light with you throughout your life. And today we remember Oh, he carried that light of Christ. Oh, he was that light of Christ too as a dad, as a grandpa, as a great grandpa. Oh, he carried that light of Christ with his sense of humor, with his hope, with his words, with the sayings he had, with his kindness and his love. He carried that light of Christ. And today, 
as we hear in the second reading, he was born into death with Christ. And Jesus died for us. And being born into that death, it says death no longer has power over him. And death, death has power over us here. But death has no power over him. Because he lives the resurrection. He lives the gift of eternal life. Death has no more power over him in any way because he lives that perfection. There's no more lung disease. There's no more lung trouble. There's no struggle to breathe. Because the Lord tells us in the book of Revelation, I make all things new. And Easter Sunday was the evidence of that. Those disciples were looking for a bloody body. It wasn't at all what they saw. They saw a glorified body to life in Jesus. And that's Daniel's salvation. That gift and the power of the resurrection. And as we come today and we celebrate his life, we honor his life. Here at the cemetery, his life is going to be honored by the military. We come today and we honor his life in being here. Your presence to his family here today means a great, great deal. And I have to always say, you have done so well, sitting in the right place, and social distancing and wearing masks. I know it's a challenge. Trust me, I wear a mask eight hours a day at the hospital. I know it's a challenge. And then little blue fibers, so you're always coming at your nose and your mouth, not a big thing. But we're doing it to take care of one another. Take care of not just ourselves, but to take care of one another. The way he took care of others in life. And today as we honor him, the greatest way we can honor Daniel is to take what we most admire about his life. His faith, his love, his kindness, his generosity, the way he enjoyed life through golf, through family. Whatever it is we most, we most recognize, we most cherish about what he did with you in your relationship with him. Take that gift and live that gift every single day. That's the greatest way we can honor him, is take what we learned from him and to continue to live that gift. Because that shows God how grateful we are for the gift of him in our lives and in our journey. But it also shows him how much we love him by what he taught.